I've had this video on the back burner for about half a year now, simply because I couldn't think of a movie that could start the conversation efficiently enough. That was until I watched the directorial debut of the multi-talented Bo Burnham, 8th Grade, which was so accurate and interesting in its presentation of younger teenagers that the script for this video became immediately monstrously easier to write. They say It sounds silly to praise a movie like this for starring children that look like children instead of young adults, but it's unfortunately something worth praising in the industry. The reason for this is that more experienced actors are a lot easier for directors to work with. It's why Tobey Maguire was the original actor for Spider-Man, because for Peter Parker to look like a realistic high schooler, you would have needed both an actor young enough to take part, but also good enough to play fucking Spider-Man, and also a director ballsy enough to direct a group of children for this insanely influential and popular series. So props to Bo for being both brave and skilled enough to direct less experienced actors on his first fucking film. In 8th grade, the teenagers are written with very little derivatives. Teenage quirks such as social struggles are involved, but are reeled back to a realistic degree. Let's take over the phone communication for example. Kayla is posing on the bed for what she wants to be the perfect Instagram picture. She receives this message regarding the birthday party of a slightly quote unquote cooler girl. Hi, so my mum said to invite you to my thing tomorrow, so this is me doing that. Notice how Kennedy isn't directly insulting the protagonist or being blatantly vicious or horrible, because it's not that obvious in real life. Now compare it to this interaction in Tall Girl. I was hoping you didn't have a date yet. You'd want to go with me to the homecoming desk. So, so I'm, I'm guessing that Uncle Man gave you my number? No, no. I just looked it up in the phone book under Big Ugly Chirrup. <laughs> Snipper. Gotcha. So you really don't think a guy is allowed to steal from me into you, do you? You're the tall girl. You'll never be the pretty girl. <laughs> I mean, goddamn, what a terrible attempt at writing teenagers. It's clear as day that the writer hasn't been a teen in decades. People don't talk in badly written, offensively American one-liners in real life. Also unrelated, but the editing, lighting, and presentation are total shit, which is actually somewhat true for 8th grade too, but whatever, we're getting off topic. Back to the writing. What Bo does really well is capture the continuous and rapid miniature embarrassments that populate the life of a young girl, rather than huge animated misdemeanors. A lesser writer may have written Kennedy to demand that Kayla not threaten her social ranking by attending the party, or much like Tool Girl, pulling an epic and funny prank. Kayla is blissfully innocent when it comes to life as a whole. She's stupid, but not mean or malicious. She's realistically stupid. It's all too common for teenage characters to be so dumb that it's annoying, or so smart that it's equally annoying. Because it's a fairly difficult ask to make the mundane, disparaging day-to-day -day incidents and personalities interesting to watch. But when put in the hands of a great team, the awkward silence of a misjudged birthday gift can become a deafening screech of tragic silence that's both funny and developmental for the character. Another example is the group photo. Kayla is actually in it. No one wants her in it, not even her, but she's there despite her introversion. And not one person tells her to piss off, because mean girls in real life tend to be passively dismissive rather than openly vicious and malevolent. Mainstream cinema has a habit of depicting teens as sullen, sloppy caricatures or impossibly elegant ingenues. In fact, Fisher's lack of live-action appearances and tendency to voice minor characters such as Agnes from Despicable Me was a direct result of her teenage acne, when in reality, that's exactly what we fucking need! It's what audiences who actually want something from the media they consume have been yearning for for years! It's what Netflix fails to do and gets so much shit for! It's a hugely important part of displaying teenagers, because it's such an incredible way of symbolizing insecurity, displaying imperfection, and radiating relatability. I think the British do a much better job presenting teenagers in film, but British vs American TV is a video for another day. And luckily, some of my favorite depictions of male teenagers also happen to be from very American film. Superbad is the US version of the in-between as if it was actually good, and it's yet another incredible representation of teenagers in film, despite the exaggeration, because these characters are undoubtedly a little exaggerated, you've got to admit. But that can work really well when it's actually funny. So that and 8th grade are what immediately come to my mind when I think of well-done teens in film.